Hey, what's going on guys? It's Fury. Welcome to the sequel, The Best Minimal Slot Wand Builds Part 2. I just want to quickly thank you guys. The response on the first video was absolutely amazing. It blew me away. So thank you guys. Here's part two. We got twice as many to get through this time, so let's get started. Up first, we have the extremely effective Fireball Orbit on triplicate bolt. You can put fireball orbit on any projectile such as a spark bolt and it will do well, but triplicate bolts have three different pellets and each one of those pellets gets its own fireball orbit for not much mana. This will help you absolutely shred most enemies through a good chunk of the game especially later on when you might be able to rapid fire this. And unlike a lot of two spell builds, this one is highly effective against mechanical enemies as well, and not just the fleshy enemies. Early on, this is just an insanely powerful combo. You're gonna have to spray yourself down with water a lot so that you don't set yourself on fire every two seconds, but you should be doing that anyway. Especially early on, water is your best friend. Other than that, the only real downside that this has is that in order to unlock the Fireball Orbit spell, you need to first defeat the dragon mini-boss in the jungle. But after you unlock it, you'll start finding it very commonly early on in your runs, and it's very effective. Next, we got Water Trail on a Rock, a very simple and elegant weapon for a more civilized time. Kick rock, drown the world. <laughs> And obviously having the Breathless perk helps you to not drown yourself. And carrying around an Uko Skeevy allows you to electrocute everything around you. Just be mindful of your surroundings. You don't want to explode yourself by detonating a propane tank or anything. I call this one the we've got creepy liquid at home build. It might not look it in this footage, but it's actually extremely powerful. Enemies can't breathe underwater, most of them. So you could just drown everything or just electrocute them easily. It's very good, very simple. And that's what this video is all about, right? Plasma Cutter is very effective at digging and removing every layer of your skin. <laughs> Ouch. However, by slapping the new Null Shot spell on before Plasma Cutter, you can dig without doing any damage to yourself at all. Null Shot is not exactly a common spell to find, especially early on, but if you do find it, just know that it will completely remove the damage from Plasma Cutter, making it a much safer spell to dig with. Next is Damage Field on Pollen. Pollen is one of my favorite spells in the entire game. It is a highly versatile spell that a lot of people avoid because it does do self damage, but very minimal self damage. Now, let me show you exactly why this is so good. Not only will Pollen act as a shield against enemy projectiles, even quite easily blocking this guy's attacks, but it also has natural homing. Not only this, but it's also good for digging through soft materials like snow or the coal veins in coal pits. It's actually probably my favorite way to dig around in coal pits and gather all the gold veins that are scattered around in the walls. And also, it's very effective in the fungal caverns, where these little boogers are usually kind of a pain in the butt to aim at. Pollen will just very effectively track them and kill them, especially if you have the damage field on there. Damage field obviously adds a lot more damage, and it's piercing damage that is applied very quickly. I ended up taking quite a bit of damage during that little excursion, but with Boomerang, Piercing Shot, and Healing Bolt, you can heal yourself back up to max very quickly. This is another classic that is tried and tested, and so it definitely deserves a spot on this list. I was debating whether or not I was even going to put this one on the list, but this is actually one of the first classics because it is just straight up very effective. And it's simply any of the homing modifiers, in my case short range homing, followed by disc projectile. That's it. In this clip, you can see just how easily, even though I get smacked right in the schnoz right there by a Hisi CEO, you can see how easily I take out most of this biome full of Hisi. That is because Disc Projectile will just absolutely shred any fleshy enemy, such as the Hisi. And with a homing modifier on it, it will take them out from around corners because the Disc Projectile is slow enough for the homing to actually really affect it greatly. Of course, this is not as effective against mechanical enemies or enemies that are obviously strong against slice damage, but for two slots, you can't deny the usefulness of this one. 
And now, with double spell, any of the material spells, in my case oil, crit on that material spell, and a projectile, you can do non-stop criticals. Do, 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 do. That's because if you multicast a material spell along with a crit on a projectile, it doesn't matter if that material spell actually touches the enemy, it will still trigger a crit. And now, the gateway to extreme damage with rotate towards foes, heavy shot, accelerating shot, bouncing burst. Which, not coincidentally, you can combine with the material critical mechanic to create monstrosities such as this, which are used to do insane DPS to high orb boss fights. Anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Bouncing Burst is a very interesting spell in that it does more damage based on the difference between its starting speed and its ending speed. So if you can slow it down a bunch at the beginning, i.e. using Heavy Shot, and then speed it up a lot over time with Accelerating Shot, then it's going to do extreme damage, as you just saw. You can get by without Rotate Towards Foes and Accelerating Shot if you use Accelerative Homing, but it's not quite as efficient or effective. Rotate Towards Foes is the best homing modifier to use on Bouncing Burst builds, and so we use Accelerating Shot along with that. But now, hopefully you understand that mechanic, as well as the Material Critical mechanic, and then now you should be able to combine the two together, along with more damage modifiers, to do just insane damage to enemies. And now, Spark Bolt with Trigger, Orbiting Arc, Short Range Homing, and any of the note spells. I'm using G because it's my favorite one. The note spells are very interesting because they do natural piercing. And if you add damage and lifetime to them, then they proc that damage very frequently. And that's exactly what Orbiting Arc does. It adds both lifetime and damage. Not that much, but you'll see that it's actually enough. At least early on. As you progress through your run, you could add just more and more damage to this, along with more notes, to just absolutely melt any enemy in the game. The best has definitely yet to come, but before I continue, I just want to let you guys know that I now have a Kofi page, and I still have merch up over here. And obviously, just watching my videos is amazing. Giving them a like or a comment, whatever helps out too. You guys know the drill. But if you ever do want to just buy me a coffee or get some merch, then the links will be down below in the description. Anyway, let's get back to the video. All right, now we got something very special here from none other than Nobi. Spark Bolt with Trigger, Teleporting Cast, Summon Hollow Egg, and any spell that has limited casts such as Circle of Vigor. When you fire this wand into something that counts as both ground and an enemy, such as these guys, these guys, these guys, or conveniently the statues inside of Holy Mountains, it actually duplicates that cast. That's right. So two Circles of Vigor just became four. Amazing, right? Obviously, there are Greek letter spells in the game that can supply you with infinite heals, but if you don't have access yet to any of them, and you need a little bit more healing or Mothasad or anything else that has limited casts, obviously, then this really simple build will work in a pinch. And then you could just carry these around with you in your item slots, and then use them whenever you need them. And then duplicate them some more every time you're in a holy mountain. Because you just have to grab the spell refresher, to be able to duplicate them again. But if you did want to get a little bit more complicated with this, you could use a lot more triggers, and then the short range homing is to make sure that all the triggers actually hit the statue. Yeah, you can duplicate spells a lot. But importantly, keep in mind that if you decide to quit your game in order to continue it later, all of the eggs you produce will be empty when you get back. The contents of these hollow eggs is not saved in between resets. So just remember not to dupe a bunch of spells right before you're going to take a break. So that one's pretty amazing. But if you want to keep it simple, this is really all you need right here. Up next, we have homing, damage, Death Cross, or Mist. This is useful because not only does it home in and explode, but it actually does damage continuously before it explodes. And obviously, as you just saw, it's very effective against the mechanical enemies as well. Mist works in exactly the same way, except I think it's a little bit less effective without adding more slots and more damage and such to it. 
Now we have Teleporting Cast Explosion, which allows you to teleport explosions onto enemies. Imagine that. Keep in mind that if it doesn't find an enemy, it's going to teleport that explosion on top of your own body. In order to avoid that, we can use a trigger and then we can increase the damage a lot by adding Chain Spell. Boom. But my personal favorite explosion build is spark bolt with timer, explosive projectile, and any material spell, in my case, oil. As you can see, it does a lot of explosion damage, about 300, but every kill with this should be a trick kill. So if you have trick greed, then you're gonna get four times the amount of gold, and if you have trick blood money, you're gonna heal every time you kill an enemy. Also keep in mind that there are some enemies, like these scumbags right here, that actually heal from explosion damage, so... Yeah. Which is why we're moving on to my current personal favorite, Minimal Build, which weaponizes long distance cast with increased lifetime and add damage that I like to call the Wall Hacker. It's very similar to Ping Pong Lumi, except it doesn't damage the environment at all. Like I said, we're using long distance cast as our weapon. Let's just add reduce recharge time to speed things up a little bit and make this a little bit more fun. Oh, and fun it is. And extremely effective, even against this guy right here. Mr. Scotty, smooshed. It's a very conservative build because it does not even destroy flasks, doesn't detonate explosives, it won't destroy chests. It's pretty nice. And finally, here's a build using the new fish spell. This build comes to us courtesy of Indoor Cat. Add trigger, summon fish, and summon Takasova. We're just gonna cast this fish here, and then we gotta wait. I'm here on the island in the middle of the lake because we need one of these animals to touch the fish, and there we go. As soon as an entity, an animal, touches the fish, it triggers it to spawn infinite wands. Of course, if the fish is not moving, then it's just gonna summon the same wand repeatedly. So you just move it around a little bit. In my case, I have more blood, so it's got plenty of liquid to swim in. What's funny is that this little guy can still kill. There he goes. <laughs> what a little brute. Improving on this, we could go add trigger, bloodlust, null shot, summon fish, and then summon Taikasova. Now let's cast this thing and see what happens. You trigger it. Woo! That is absolutely amazing. So yeah, infinite wand farms using fish. On the subject of infinite, we got light shot, double spell, black hole, and wand refresh in order to shoot infinite speedy black holes without Greek letters. For our final infinite build, we have the infinite damage build using summon tentacle with timer, heavy shot, spells to power, divide by 10, omega, and summon missile. Because of course on a list of the best minimal slot wand builds, I need a build that has no cap to its damage. Because I don't have a 64 orb call me handy right now, I'm just gonna test this out on him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the gods are afraid they should be, because he just got zamped. Anyway, yeah, this wand build right here does infinite damage. Of course, this is Noita, and even with infinite damage, you can't expect to be able to kill everything, right? Before we get to my last pick, here are a couple honorable mentions. The Old Faithful Chainsaw Double Cast Projectile, in this case, Spark Bolt. You could use any low-cost projectile, though. The reason why I didn't put this on my actual list, and it's in the honorable mentions, is because it's highly dependent on the wand, not just the build itself. See, on a good wand like this, it was rapid fire. However, this wand right here is one that I actually found naturally in the mines, and on this wand, it is pretty useless, actually. And you would be much better off just putting a spark bolt on your starting bomb wand and firing that, because it will fire a lot faster. And that's pretty much my reason. And it is a classic, the simple chainsaw spell wrap. You can't rely on something like this. Like some of these other builds, I know I put the infinite damage in here, whatever. But anyway, at least I put it in the video. For that same reason, chainsaw, nala, small teleport bolt can be very good you can teleport very quickly around the world with one of these. However, it too is very dependent on the wand. 
If you have a slow wand or just like an average wand, it's going to be pretty useless. I would much, much rather put just small teleport bolt on its own or like I put in the first video, the long distance cast small teleport bolt. Or, of course, for both of these builds, if you want to use a bunch of slots and you have the mana and you have extra chainsaws or just a way to speed these wands up more, go for it. But as far as these builds themselves, just these three spells and these three spells, meh. Which brings us to... Add Expiration Trigger, Light Shot, Increase Lifetime, Lightning Bolt, Double Spell, Damage Plus, Swapper, and Summon Deer Koi, which together make the most efficient, lowest slot parallel world travel wand. It trades ease of use for the lower slots because you need to be kind of like on top of a tree or something. You need a lot of open space in order to use this efficiently because it's very easy to just, you know, screw that up by uh, trying to teleport when you, you need a long runway, pretty much. But it's still really cool that I think Schmammerin made this wand. It's cool that they were able to make it with such few wand slots. And yeah, you can teleport into a parallel world with this. It's simple. Pretty crazy. It's not exact, but it's pretty crazy. It's exactly pretty crazy. And you know what? I am too right now. It's like 2 a.m. I've been working on this video for a long time, but especially the past three days have been from morning until really, really late at night, trying to get this thing finished, because I got other stuff I want to work on, too. <laughs> Including streaming. I mean, what the heck? Anyway, all right. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that some of you guys found some useful builds in here. Don't flame me too much for not putting your favorite in or putting them in the honorable mentions. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, thanks. Have a great day. And... Like always, happy noiting.